Progression on me, progression on three. Yo, what's going down? It's your boy King Spence. We back with another interview. And, you know, we, if you watched the last interview with Stephen Cole, the Bitcoiner, then you know we got the basics of Bitcoin down. But we got more. It's such a broad topic. And we want to get y'all as much as possible so that you can't go into this blind. And you really understand the importance of this because, you know, we're trying to put y'all on some game. So, um, real quick, Stephen, I want you to just kind of reiterate what is Bitcoin. For sure, yeah. So we covered a lot of ground last time. Bitcoin is a huge topic. Uh, last time we kind of got the basics, right? So like Bitcoin isn't just a way to send money. It's a whole new type of money. It's scarce. It's limited. There's only a certain number that will ever exist. And it's uncensorable. So like nobody can stop anybody else from paying someone in Bitcoin. Like at a high level, those are some of the big things. And we covered that last time. But I think like last time we focused a lot on Bitcoin, you know, as money, Bitcoin as kind of this like techie thing, this finance thing, and it can be that. But today I think we also want to dive into like Bitcoin's not just for techie people and it's not just for finance people, like Bitcoin's for everybody. Thanks. And besides just being this cool tech thing, like it's actually this powerful movement and could really change the world in some big ways. And and so today, we can get more into that. Okay, so I know um, if you follow Steven, then you're familiar with what we're going into for sure. I advise you to follow him. But one question that I do have is what power does Bitcoin give to its, I guess, consumer or yep. supporter? Yeah, yeah. A lot and so much more than you know is obvious I think like it takes a while to realize that Bitcoin is actually it's not just this like new techie money thing for people who want to go experiment it's it's like a very powerful almost weapon like it's a way for people to take power back for themselves and and like the background there is I don't think many people realize how much power has been taken away from them. Like in the system today, like there's a lot of stuff going on in the world, right? 2020, it's crazy. You got riots in big cities. Um, we got like defund the police. There's like politically, you know, whatever side you're on. I think everybody's mad about something. Mm -hmm. And there aren't really any good solutions out there that are offered, right? Like a lot of people are mad and, you know, people are doing things. But when you look at how do people actually fight back against the system? Like, do we just vote different? Do we vote harder? Do we like, you know, do we protest? Do we rally? Do we like break stuff? I, I don't know. But like with Bitcoin, you can actually take back power to the people in a way that most people don't quite realize yet. And it takes a while to kind of to kind of grok that. But once you do, I think that's the biggest deal about Bitcoin. Governments for the last long time, uh, you know, decades, have been quietly taking power away from people. And they do it in these complicated ways. So it's not even really obvious that that power is being taken away. But you just wake up and you have a lot less freedom and you kind of feel like, you know, you're, you're under the, the weight of this big system. It's hard to get out from. And it happens so gradually, it's tough to see. Um, and I think Bitcoin's like finally this thing where you can actually maybe change the system. Okay, so you just said something that's really powerful and very really current as far as the um, defunding the police. Yep. And I understand in in com in full what you mean by it. But let's elaborate on that a little bit more. So obviously the government can reprint money, uh, you know, just create money out of thin air yeah. and um, fund whatever they want to fund. How exactly does Bitcoin um, remove that power from them? Yeah, yeah. I, like you nailed it. Exactly. That is the whole secret sauce of the government right and central banking is like they've figured out a way to steal money from people without people realizing that it's being taken and every year everybody pays taxes and everybody thinks okay 
there's, you know, they're taking that money from me and they're using it to do stuff. And maybe you like that stuff, maybe you don't, whatever. Mm -hmm. But there's all these other ways that they're quietly taking money from people that they don't talk about, that they don't realize. And like you said, they can print more money. They can control the money supply. So, you know, we're, we're in the U.S. Everybody saves with U.S. dollars. You probably got dollars in your checking account, savings account, whatever. Even though the number in that account might stay the same, you're losing a little bit of purchasing power every day because you're like, you got your stash of dollars and they're just over on the side printing more for themselves to give to banks, to give to big corporations, to do bailouts, to do whatever they want. And so that makes everything more expensive. That's why the price of stuff goes up over time. And they don't like teach this, they don't talk about it. Um, but since like the early 1970s, this is how it's worked. And so groceries get more expensive. Everything on the store, like to kind of survive just like on savings, you know, is not easy because they're just like doing their little thing, siphoning off value for themselves from your hard earned money. And with Bitcoin, it helps fix that because they can't control the supply of the money. There's only a certain number of Bitcoin that will ever exist. And they cannot reach into your account and grab those Bitcoin for themselves. They cannot go and print more Bitcoin for themselves or their buddies. It's actually a thing that you can buy and hold and nobody can steal that value from you before. And that's that's like unique. I think that's a game changer. Thanks. Okay, so all that being said, right now with the whole, with all these social media, these social things like people want to need to fund the police, X, Y, Z, there's also, you know, COVID being a big thing. Yep. And um, I guess it's kind of waking up the economy in a sense to, it's kind of made money nasty. Yeah. A, a, a nasty thing. Um, but do you see our government or or just or just currency in general ever going paperless yeah uh there's i I see a big push towards that for sure um even if you look around like you go out to gas stations nowadays across the country and there will be signs taped to the door when you walk in about how they're short on coins and they encourage everybody to use credit cards it's been happening for a long time, but I think it's getting way more obvious now. They're like pushing everybody towards digital money, but they're but they're pushing everyone towards digital money in a way that they control it, right? Credit cards, bank accounts, the the main banking system. That's something where everything that you do, they see, and if they want to take your money out of your account, shut your account down. If they want to stop you from paying somebody for something that you want to pay for, then that's easy for them. Like you're on their turf, you're in their system. Um, And so I think the more that they push people towards digital money and away from like physical cash, the easier it is for them to control everyone and see everything that's going on. And that worries me, like with privacy and with government overreach, you know, very like totalitarian big government stuff, I think the government's already taken a lot of power from the people. And that's what I like about solutions like Bitcoin, where like it's still digital money. So in that way, it might look the same, but they don't see everything that's going on in Bitcoin. They don't, then they definitely don't control the supply of the money. They can't stop payments. They can't affect your account balance with Bitcoin. So it, uh, it effectively like gives you a way to opt out of the system that they're in and go to a system that you control. Okay, so, um, you said a revelation. Yeah, Um, good. (laughs) Would, would, um, that make the U.S. economy weaker being that they don't have control over the money anymore? Maybe so, like, it would make the U.S. dollar weaker, Mm -hmm. for sure. I don't think it would make the U.S. economy weaker, not in the long run. Um, So Bitcoin, you know, it's a new money, and it competes with other types of money. 
So we got like, you know, the there's like the dollar, there's the yen, there's the peso, euro, all those. Um, Bitcoin competes with those. And the more people who opt into Bitcoin, um, like if you open an app and you buy $10 worth of Bitcoin, you just took, you traded dollars for Bitcoin. And so now the value that you created in the world, right? It's like, it's on the Bitcoin side. It's no longer on the dollar side. And so that makes dollars a little less valuable and it makes Bitcoin a little more valuable. The more people who do that, then the weaker the US dollar gets, the more powerful Bitcoin gets. But what I think is that like, I think that's important. I think that's an important check on government power because the government's just been getting bigger and taking more and more liberties from people, taking more and more freedom from people and doing a lot of stuff. And it's not even like a conversation now. They just, you know, they, they can do it. They can drop bombs. They can, you know, go to war. They can do whatever. And they don't have to ask you for your money. And with Bitcoin, it flips that upside down. You gotta ask. They have to ask. We that's, gotta find you. That's right. Find it, it's a conversation, at least. They can't just go and do it. Yeah. They gotta convince you, give them your Bitcoin. That's a game changer. That is huge. I hope y'all caught that. Okay, so this is all this is all scary talk to somebody who's unfamiliar with this. Sure. But um so do you have to be do you have to be a tech wizard, uh, a computer scientist, a <laughs> guru to understand the Bitcoin technology? Definitely not. Um, like Bitcoin, you know, it is kind of a computer internet type of thing. So if you want to like dive deep into it, then, you know, there's all kinds of computer science stuff there. But to just use it, not a bit. Um, I think it's unfortunate that a lot of people see Bitcoin as, oh, I have to be techie to use it or I have to be an investor to use it or some like finance person. And it's not that at all. I think like Bitcoin's for everybody and the it's easy to buy it and to just hold it like really that's step one to getting bitcoin it seems scary when you like build it up in your head you know the idea of like oh i don't have any bitcoin should i get some it probably sounds intimidating but like you download an app you you know hook up a bank account or whatever pay some dollars get some bitcoin and then you're a bitcoiner and you've got some money then in a way that the, that like you're aboard this new system and and it's that easy to start and there are levels if anybody wants to like learn way more about it they can but you do not need at all to like be techie to get into bitcoin thanks okay so you have to use your cash that you have now to get invested into bitcoin um or to i guess um yeah to get invested into bitcoin but that's what you can do right now. What happens if Bitcoin outvalues the US dollar in yeah. the future? Yeah, that's where it gets wild. <laughs> so like right now, Bitcoin's tiny. It's new, you know, Bitcoin was only created about 10 years ago. And so when you compare it to other assets in the world, it's, it's very small. Um, right now there's like roughly 200 billion dollars worth of value stored in bitcoin and if you compare that to other big currencies like the dollar you're talking like trillions of dollars like three trillion at least maybe more of, of value that's stored in dollars if you look at other things like gold you know precious metals people some people are way into investing in that that's like seven trillion dollars so when you stack that up next to like a couple hundred billion of bitcoin Bitcoin's so new that it's got such a long way to go. And, but like in a good way, I mean that as like, there's a lot of potential upside in Bitcoin because people will mistakenly think that they're late to the game, right? Like, like they see that Bitcoin is about $12,000. I think like today we're recording this, it's like about $12,000 for one Bitcoin. They probably think that seems high and that maybe they missed the boat because a few years ago it was a lot cheaper. But if you look back, like it's always gone like that. And every time you encounter Bitcoin for the first time, everybody probably feels like it's late, but it's not. I mean, I, I saw Bitcoin for the first time in like 
2013. And I remember thinking, oh man, it's like hundreds of bucks for a coin, that seems expensive. So it'll just always feel expensive, you know? Um, but it might not be when, like, if Bitcoin becomes hundreds of thousands of dollars in, you know, yeah, which I believe will happen. Um, if it becomes millions of dollars, which I believe will happen, and maybe someday it becomes larger than the U.S. dollar, then then we'll look back at $12,000 Bitcoin and they're like, damn, that was cheap. Like, how wasn't I able to see that at the time? It'll be really obvious in hindsight if we ever get there. Um so I think though it could lead to a much better world. Like, like if we get to Bitcoin outvaluing the dollar, like more value being stored there, then that means governments can't do as much of the stuff that they do without permission from the people. That mean like Bitcoin outvaluing the dollar to me would be like this revolution is going well. Like the, the people are taking the power back from the government and that's how you measure it. Okay, so I guess the last question that I have kind of refers to how value is measured. Yeah. So if we say that um, the US dollar is worth like three trillion dollars yeah. or give or take, what like what does that mean? Like there's three trillion dollars worth of stuff Pretty much, yeah, three trillion dollars worth of savings, economic value that's sort of stored in uh, in that currency, in the U.S. dollar, and in assets directly tied to the U.S. dollar. What gets wild though is like because Bitcoin competes with dollars, it, it's hard because you're you're like measuring these two things against each other, but everybody's used to thinking in dollars, mm-hmm. and if. Bitcoin starts to overtake it, then it'll get hard to think about things in dollar terms, and it'll be easier to start thinking about things in Bitcoin terms. And then that leads to a world where, you know, you go to lunch and you're listing prices and you see prices in Bitcoin instead of dollars. Um, That's like, it's not practical right now to think about prices in Bitcoin because the, the value changes so much. It's like so volatile, right? It's up and down all the time. That's just because we're really early, and that's just because Bitcoin's still really small. So if you know if more people get into Bitcoin, they just start like holding onto it and just saving it, and then someday it's much much more valuable. Then in that world, it becomes really easy to like list and think about prices in Bitcoin, and it would be hard to list them in dollars because then in that future, dollars would be the volatile thing. Dollars would be falling in value so quickly. Week. Well, that's some good information about Bitcoin. Now, that's pretty much all we got for you guys today. If you got any more questions pertaining to Bitcoin or, you know, just cryptocurrency in general, I highly advise that you tap into more content produced by Stephen Cole, the Bitcoiner. Follow him on Instagram, Twitter, all those good places. Um... Any last words? Hey, nah, appreciate it. Shout out to Tulsa Progression. (laughs) Keep Spence. That's right. Well, hey, man, that's all we got for y'all. Go check out the video in the description to get that part one. And look forward to a part three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We out. Bitcoin unplugged. Progression on me. Progression on three. Here we go. Seven days a week. 